Posture and Balance Physiotherapy in Cerebellar Ataxia. In this video, we will talk about the rehabilitation of balance and posture in patients with cerebellar ataxia. We will begin by discussing the basics of posture and balance training. The physiological mechanisms that ensure posture and balance are the following. In relation to the support base on which the exercises will be performed, we have to take into account that muscle tone is inversely proportional to it and to the support it gives. Thus, the greater the support base, the lower the postural tone. A correct posture requires alignment of the body's center of gravity in relation to the support base. This is a process that is carried out automatically through muscle contractions and adjustments that seek to keep the center of gravity within the support base. When a body segment changes its position, the body's gravity center changes and this produces changes in postural tone. Any condition of the central nervous system can alter the automatic postural adaptation mechanisms of muscles and cause misalignment of the body's gravity center. It is important to remember the three balance reactions since we are going to introduce them into our treatment. We can see the balancing reactions carried out by the patient to compensate for small shifts in weight. We can see the straightening reactions that the patient performs as a counterweight to compensate for the broader movement. Although these reactions are automatic, they can also be done voluntarily. We can see automatic support reactions of the arms to increase the support base. It is the ultimate way of keeping balance and it can be executed voluntarily. Next, some exercises aimed at training posture and balance will be shown. When implementing a rehabilitation session with a patient with ataxia, we must clearly organize it according to a progression in the exercises in order to be able to establish the appropriate characteristics for the tasks that we are going to perform based on the assessment. The adaptations of the exercise will be based on the chosen posture, the elements that provide feedback, whether they are facilitators or disruptors of the position, and the work with dual motor or cognitive tasks to automize the movement. Regarding feedback, we can use different types, touch, proprioceptive such as TheraBand, visual or acoustic. The first chosen position to train will be the sitting one. We will initially have to work the static balance in this position and when it is achieved, we can work on activities that involve a control of the dynamic balance. Next, we will carry out some preparatory exercises to finally be able to perform the complete task. The patient is sitting on an examination bed without back support, trying to maintain a sitting position with his eyes open. The physiotherapist stands behind him to facilitate posture with the hands at lateral key points or central key point. For the disturbance of the position and stimulation of balancing reactions, we can add an unstable surface under the feet to make it difficult to maintain the position. We can also work on adding difficulty, asking the patient to perform a dual motor task. We now turn to work on dynamic balance. We will carry out preparatory movements, such as shifting the weight from one ischium to another, and the patient has to try to keep his trunk erect. We can perform this exercise using our hands holding from the axillary area, or a TheraBand can be used. Now the patient performs the dissociation between the pelvic and scapular girdles. We ask the patient to perform arm movements from side to side. Next, we carry out a complete task, reaching exercise. Left of the patient on the examination bed, there are some rings, and to his right, a coat hanger in which he will have to hang them. The patient performs the same movement, but we put an unstable surface under the feet to make the exercise more difficult. To add difficulty, we can ask the patient to do the task with eyes closed, keeping in mind that the important thing is to maintain balance while sitting. 
we add a dual motor task. We have to keep in mind that what we are looking for in these exercises is for the patient to maintain good postural control. Next, we will perform static balance training exercises while standing. We will use the same order as in the sitting exercises. The patient will stand close to a support and the physiotherapist can facilitate the position by putting his or her hands on the central key points. To make balance a bit more difficult, we can ask the patient to close his or her eyes. We can also perform these stabilizations with the aim of disturbing balance and testing balance reactions. This way we can see the balancing and support reactions. We can also place the patient on an unstable surface and perform similar exercises. And again, we can carry out unilateral or multilateral destabilizations with the patient in this unstable surface. We can also ask the patient to perform a dual motor task, such as keeping the upper limbs in extension at 90 degrees of sh shoulder flexion, or by putting tension on a theraband. Now we can do an exercise to work dynamic balance while standing. The patient will perform weight shift exercises. The physiotherapist from behind guides the movement. Then we can ask the patient to perform weight shifting while lifting off the foot from the ground. Weight transfers can also be performed in an anterior posterior movement from the heel or toe. It will always be done in front of a trellis so that at first you can do it with its support and then freely. Next, we carry out the exercise of pointing the numbers from the center of the clock. We can start with support on the trellis. Now we perform it without the support on the trellis and ask the patient to take breaks to regain the initial position and stimulate both static and dynamic balance. We can modify the pattern and the patient has to indicate the numbers continuously, without pauses. References Thank you for using this e-platform.